Hello, this is Alex Godden from the Robotics Institute in Barcelona. And I'm going to explain some models we've created to play the hide and seek game as a mobile uh, robot. Here uh, the contents of the presentation. So I explain a bit about the hide and seek problem and the, the methods we've, been cre we've created. Some results of simulation and real world experiments in the end. Okay. So why hide and seek? Because it requires a lot of uh, cognitive functions such as we need a space representation in this space we need to search and navigate we need to understand the game and we have to decide what actions to do also based on the behavior of the other of the opponent and also predict on this Fur furthermore if we are playing a, uh, in a team for example we need to coordinate and we need to communicate so our version of the hide and seek contains one seeker and one hider and the goal i'll show you the next slide it's more clear we have a uh, the goal is for the seeker to catch the hider and the goal of the hider is to go to the base and the base this map is here it's also the position where the seeker starts and the hider can start at any position on the map we've been using discrete maps and the movements and the are discrete in uh, space and time so uh, the hider and the seeker are moving at the same time step and they can move in one direction horizontally vertically or diagonally are staying at the same position here i'll show you a small table of some experiments done by other authors using uh, different mo uh, solvers to generate a policy for the different partial observable markovian decision processes and uh, they used the game tag in which one robot has to catch another one we see here the map of 29 positions and since the state is the combination of both players we have 870 states one state is the state of being tagged here we see on the right uh, column we see the time it took to calculate the, the policy of line and we see that clearly that the search up is uh, is the fastest and then we see the difference between P omnipes and M omnipes in the last two columns with more states. I'll explain a bit more about that right now. So P omnipes, first Markovian decision processes are contain a set of states. In our case, the state is a combination of the hydro and the seeker position. The actions are the eight directions we can go to or staying at the same position. Then we have a transition probability function which gives us the probability of going from one state to another given uh, an action and uh, the reward is uh, given is the definition of what reward is given in each of the states and then we have a discount factor in our case however we do not always know the exact state we do not always know the position of the hider and therefore we are using the partially observable MDPs and here we do not know the state exactly but we have a certain observation of the state and this uh, observation there's a certain probability which is defined by z the matrix z in which uh, which defines the probability of observing an observation given that we are in a certain state so in pmdps we do not know exactly where we are but we do have a certain belief of the state we know a certain probability of being in each of the possible states and we start with an initial belief in our case if blue is the, sur the seeker and black are obstacles then the dark gray are the s dark gray cells are the areas which are not visible to us and these cells could be the position of the hider as an initial state we simply distribute uh, the probabilities of being in each of those states so distribute the, the belief over each of those positions where the sum is always one there are some issues with PMDP since we are not working with uh, direct states but we are working with beliefs we have a certain belief space which has the number state minus one dimensions furthermore uh, if we are looking into the, uh, the next steps in the future we have a certain three which is growing exponentially we have initial belief B0 and then we have a certain number of actions we can do in each of those beliefs and for each of those actions we have 
also a limited number of observations we can do and this uh, makes the tree grow exponentially to uh <coughs> our game our game is uh, better modeled using the MMDP because we have here the a part which is fully observable in our case the seeker position and a partially observable uh, state variable which is the hider's position and uh, in order to model this the MDP also has different transition functions for both state variables and observation functions so in our case uh, I told you the x and y the actions are the same the observation uh, of x is actually the same as the position, the secret position, so we that we put it for completeness. But then we have the observation of the hider position, which is always we assume that we always see the position of the hider if it's visible. If it's not visible, then we have the unknown observation. Transition probabilities for the seeker are this deterministic because each action uh, brings us to another state directly. However, at the same time the hider is also moving can make a move what we did was simply use a uniform probability of the actions the user can the, ex the hider can do but we could also use historical information or heuristic information then we have the probability of observing observation probabilities and uh, the observation probability for the hider of, uh, of the hider depends directly if it's visible or not. If it's visible, then we see the location of the hydra. If it's not visible, then we see and uh, we get an unknown observation. And then we, in the end, we've used uh, two rewards: a simple reward, which is one if we win, and minus one if we lose. And the triangle reward is uh, I'll explain right now. So in the triangle reward, we have uh, we are using the three distances, which are important in the game. The seeker wants to get closer to the hider, so minimize this distance, but at the same time wants to be closer to the base than the hider is, in order to protect it. And this we can uh, define with the following uh, reward function. This is uh, increasing when the distance to the hider decreases. And we add a, a constant d, which depends on the size of the map, if we are closer to the base than the hider is. Like I thought before, uh, an issue of the PMDPs is the curse of dimensionality. And uh, in order to reduce the number of states, we should just a two-level MDP in which the lower level is exactly the same as we defined before. Only we are now not using it to calculate the policy, but we are only using it to calculate the belief and to, ke to keep track of the belief. And the top-level MDP contains a lower number of states, which is, uh, which are segmentations, segments, uh, groups of uh, states of the lower level. Here, I here we define uh, we are using the robot-centered segmentation. We call it, and this is called robot-centered because uh, zero in this case is the robot position, and in each of the eight directions it can go to, we make a segment. Further on, we can also segment based on distance which always reduces uh, the number of states. So in the end, this algorithm works as follows. We start with an initial belief, and then we continue to uh, this loop until we finish the game. First segmenting using uh, the robot sentence segmentation. We compress the belief to the top level, meaning that we calculate the top level initial belief based on the lower level belief we generate the top level m on the p that means we change a bit the transition functions and the observation function then we find the policy for that uh, m on the p and we use this policy to get the best action to do in the current state then we execute this action which brings to a new position and there we do a new observation which gives us the position of the seeker and the position the observation of the hider's position and we use this to update again the belief at the lower level and this is continued until the game is, until the game is finished so 
here uh, I'll show you the last method we've been using which is a heuristic uh, player that uses exactly the same reward function and for each possible action it simply calculates a score the score is based on the reward function but since in each for each action the seeker does the hider will also do one action we take into account each of the actions the hider can do at that uh, position at and then make a simple average of that if the hider is not visible to us then we simply take into account every non-visible position and take an average over that so we've done certain simulations on different maps sizes against a random player which moves randomly and a smart player that uses a his uh, heuristic like the smart uh, seeker I showed before so we tested those three methods I uh, I explained right now and we made a time limit of calculating the offline policy for one hour and the online version has five minutes for each step and we've used the SARSOP solver here we can see that uh, the offline method works best and it the simple reward works best against the random hider whereas the the triangle reward works best against the smart uh, hider furthermore uh, the online works quite well against the smart not that well but it's it's using the simple reward because the triangle word reward was working uh, quite worse furthermore we have the heuristic also showing here the heuristic player uh, which has quite good results also in conclusion uh, offline MMDP works best than the heuristic and finally the online method and we find also the tri triangle reward works best against the smart hider and the online version uh, it took up to 70 seconds per action on average for the 12 by 12 map and we also uh, we've seen that the offline method won in less steps so it's it not only works uh, better but it also works uh, quicker okay. and then quickly I'll show uh, two experiments done this is one in the real world in which the robot mm -hmm. is using the simple reward and uh, we can see that the robot is following the hider and in the end the hider is now closer actually to the vase and note that here uh, the simple reward is only one if the seeker is winning and minus one if the hider is winning and here we are using the triangle triangle reward and on the same map we can see that now finally the seeker uh, although it didn't see the hider it went back using because of uh, using the triangle reward so in the end uh, for the triangle reward it did not lose though we had the tie because they reached the base at the same time in conclusion uh, the triangle reward works really well the heuristic is very good but the offline method is still better because the offline method does have memory the, on the heuristic uh, version we showed before does not have memory the online method, as we explained before, works well, but the big issue is that it uh, takes quite some time still to calculate the policy. So each step took, on average, for the 12 by 12 Mac, 70 seconds. And this is also one thing we need to improve uh, using some faster solvers, for example. And we would also like to work in continuous space. And for the real world experiment, we should incorporate uh, uncertainties due to sensor information uh, in the model. So I would thank you uh, for the your attention.